Park Racing ist einfach vom Rennsport der geilste Sport überhaupt für uns. The FIA European Track Racing Championship arrives at Zolder in Belgium. The final third of the European Track Racing Championship kicks off on this tradition-rich racetrack, located about 80 kilometers away from the Belgian capital of Brussels. As the sun shone down, both the paddock and the track were buzzing with activity. With the ETCC, the European Touring Car Championship also taking place, we were expecting a great deal of action. From being named Jinx in Mosh because of his engine trouble and subsequent engine failure, to man of the weekend at Zolder, the young German Andre Kurzin fought back in a big way. Cutting your losses, it couldn't be better. Looking at the overall standings before this weekend, it's clear that the closest battle is the one for second place. Adam Lachko, the front runner, has a big lead of 60 points, and that makes him the favourite for this year's title. The Czech driver's goal is to extend his comfortable lead, if possible. As the overall front runner in the championship, he's well prepared and was once again hoping for rain. Lachko's son, Niki, showed his father who's boss in the wet conditions on Friday. We have a lot of race in front of us. We have a 12th race, 180 points in the game, and we must fight for every point, but we must fight with head. As before, three drivers are in the running for second place. At the moment, Jochen Hahn has the best chance of defending the number two spot in the table. His Iveco truck is constantly improving, and the former European champion is optimistic and ready for a fight. And after so many years, I'm being realistic so that I will probably finish in second or third place. Season. And actually, I've like accepted that. But now we'll see if we can close the gap between me and the man in front. Mm -hmm. Maybe make him nervous. Next I know how it feels. You get a little nervous before your first title. You just get nervous. Is something cracking or is everything shaking? With that in mind, we want to create some pressure, secure second place and see if we can end up in first, second or third by the end of the year. Steffi Halm has been making headway like never before, diligently accumulating points each weekend. Third place is within reach. My goal will just be to have a sensible performance in qualifying. My driving has weakened recently, and so I never had the starting position I wanted. That's my primary aim, a good starting position for the race, and then remain in a podium position throughout. For Hungarian Norbert Kisch, the past two race weekends were anything but ideal. But for the 2014 and 2015 champion, he wants to buck the trend at Zolder. Yes, we had some bad luck in Hungary and uh, in Most as well. We lost a lot of points. We should, if we, you know, not even go forward, just to keep the same places that we were falling out from, then that would put us back uh, to second place in the championship easily. But yeah, there's no ifs, so this is what we have to deal with. The Portuguese Rodriguez family has produced three generations of racing drivers. The grandfather, Eduardo, the son, Jose, and the grandson, Jose Eduardo. But only two are competing here at Zolder. At 62 years old, Eduardo has handed over the keys to his truck and the spot in the race to his grandson. Next year, Jose Eduardo will follow in his grandfather's footsteps by competing in the ETRC himself. Dominique Orsini is at a similar point in his career. The Frenchman has raced passionately for 17 years with limited funds, often driving at the back of the field, but he's nonetheless happy. My pleasure to finish the race, finish a good weekend with the nice mechanics that I have this year. And uh, for me, it's the best, it's nice. 
it's nice. And uh, uh, to be with uh, Norbert Kies with your hand, uh, it's uh, nice for me. It's nice. The same is true for the Dutchman, Irving Klein Nagelvoort. During the week, he drives across Europe in his regular truck, switching to his racing truck for the weekend. EK Truck Racing is always a good bet to come in the top three of the Promoters' Cup. I hope I, hope I can make it to the podium once or twice, but that will be difficult because Robino is here and his truck is faster, so I'll need to be lucky to get on the podium, but it'll have to be enough. 17 trucks line up on the starting grid for race one. The fastest driver in qualifying was Adam Latchko, the championship front runner. Latchko looks nervous before race one. The important is to make a really good start, go full throttle when it's coming the green. And after it's very important the first left and after two right corners. And when it's there, you are on the front, it's OK. Joining Adam Latchko on the front row is Norbert Kish, who lost out to the Czech by four tenths of a second in the Super Pole on Saturday morning. Then on the second row, Jochen Hahn and Antonio Albacete with only eight thousandths of a second between them. <laughs> Heading the third row in fifth place is Sasha Lentz after a surprisingly strong performance in qualifying, followed by David Rosetsky, Adam Latchko's teammate. He is followed by the two title hopefuls in the Promoters' Cup, Andre Kurzim in tenth, lagging behind Jose Rodriguez, the class leader, who starts in eighth. Away they go for race one at Zolder in Belgium. Adam Latchko on the right versus Norbert Kirsch on the left. They speed down the start-finish straight for the first time. Latchko pulls in front at first, but Norbert Kirsch and the number 24 Mercedes uses the inside line to his advantage, winning out against the Czech, who, as we heard before, wants to drive with his head. The start was very good, I could stay there on the outside and the braking to the first turn was very good also and in the middle of the turn I see that Adam is slow and he's sliding so I'm like oh, let's go let's go and I could stay on the outside there you know and the second turn is the right one so that was that was one for me so I could go in front and I was like oh my god did this really happen? <laughs> Right behind the big three, Kirsch, Latchko and Hahn, is Sasha Lentz in fourth position. Having come from the Nürburgring to Belgium with the wind in his sails, Lentz has made it to the podium once in recent races. That was in Mosch, where he finished third in a reverse grid race. The field is as expected. Norbert Kirsch at the front, followed by Latchko, then Hahn, Lentz, Albafetti and Halm. <laughs> Then on the fourth lap, Adam Latchko has a shocker. The Czech driver struggles to accelerate out of turn eight, at which point Jochen Hahn catches him and passes Latchko's Freightliner truck. Others follow suit. The gearbox has failed. Adam Latchko hobbles back to the pit and is unable to finish the race. This could be a severe setback for the championship leader. Coming to the right corner on the back, cir on the back on the circuit, and I shift seventh gear, and it's nothing. It's coming maybe first gear like this, it's the truck immediately stop. Jochen don't have a space, he pushed me a lot because he don't expected this. And after I go really slow on the maximum speed what is possible, maybe it's 10 kmg, I come to the pit and uh, on the pit we see it's the problem and we must go here to the tent and change the gearbox. This leaves Norbert Kirsch at the front unchallenged with a large gap between him and Jochen Hahn who will have seen the battle for the final spot on the podium in his rear view mirror. This time it's between Sasha Lentz and Antonio Albafetti. <laughs> Steffi Hahn, the only female driver on the track in the blue Reiner truck number 44 is now in fifth position. Without her realising, her truck develops a technical defect. Coming out of the Villeneuve chicane, she suddenly crashes into the barrier, but she walks away unscathed. I drove round the chicane, then after that there's a right-hand bend. I turned the wheel, drove right over the kerb, and at that moment there was a click. I slid towards the wall and couldn't stop myself. 
There was just too little space to bring the truck to a standstill. Well, yeah, as I said, that click was the spring failing, and so I couldn't even steer. You're just powerless. It's annoying, of course, to have a fault like that during a race. The fact it was in the first race is even more annoying. It was almost guaranteed I would come in fifth place and gain some more points from it. And that was the end of the action. Norbert Kirsch remained ahead and celebrated his fourth victory of the season as he finished ahead of Jochen Hahn and Sasha Lentz. <laughs> it was a very good race, very unexpected victory. Very unexpected victory, but I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I'm very thankful for the team because my track was really good, you know. Now for an overview of the results of race one. Andre Kurzim finishes sixth, winning the Promoters' Cup class ahead of Jose Rodriguez in seventh place. Irving klein Nagelbort finishes 11th with Dominic Orsini 13th. The 30-year-old German driver Sascha Lentz finished on the podium for the first time ever in a main race. Fantastic racing from him. He's earned that applause and the music begins playing as he's joined by Norbert Kisch and Jochen Hahn. A mandatory appointment on both days is the autograph signing hour, which is popular among fans and drivers alike. And Dominique Orsini is the first in the queue for an autograph. This is my friend. Truck racing is just the best type of motorsport. It has action, tension, the races are fun, and you don't have just one race on a particular day. Instead, you have four races over a whole weekend, and that's also really interesting. The day's second race, late on Saturday afternoon, has Get Korber on pole position. With 30 years' experience in the business, the word nervous is not in his vocabulary. Of course, I would have preferred my lap times to have been a little quicker so that I'd be on pole position. They were just a bit too slow. I mean, it's not easy to overtake here at Zolder. Of course, I'm trying my best to bring home a trophy for my team, but it's hard work. Sharing the front row with Corva is the Portuguese driver, Jose Rodriguez, who is leading in the Promoters' Cup. <laughs> On the next row is his most formidable opponent, Andre Kurzim. Adam Lachko, complete with a new gearbox, is at the back of the grid after his original one failed in race one. <laughs> Now for the start, as they head towards the first corner, keeping within the markers, Kurva again has a poor start and Rodriguez takes the lead, seen from Andre Kurzim's rear-view camera. As fourth-place starter David Rafetsky is forced onto the gravel. Moments later, Andre Kurzim manages to overtake Gert Kurba, moving up to second place with Kurba in third, followed by the Spaniard Antonio Albafetti. <laughs> All is well at the front of the field as they make their way towards the first chicane, while at the back, the battles rage. Irving Klein Nagelvort runs into Adam Lachko's rear end before colliding with the barrier but he manages to drive away. That was the view from Klein Nagelbort's perspective, and that looking back from Lachko's rear camera. This time, the check is lucky. The second lap at the front, the lead is hotly contested, with both drivers also topping the table for the Promoters' Cup, Rodriguez and Kurzim. It looks here as if the German makes it past the Portuguese driver, but not quite. Coming into the chicane, Kurzim cuts the corner, giving himself a clear edge and even taking the lead. But after the race, the stewards penalise him for the manoeuvre. His penalty of three places will apply to Sunday afternoon's race. The fourth lap, Kurzim has left Rodriguez and Kurba far behind in his tyre tracks. And here, Adam Lachko is attacking Sasha Lentz. The Czech in eighth place claims seventh from the young German driver.
Andre Kurzim is still in the lead. Further back, Alba Fetti first overtakes Kerber on lap five. And then Norbert Kish. Team Schwaben Truck's dream of a trophy is probably over. Gert Korber keeps dropping back, ending up in ninth place. Jose Rodriguez, the Portuguese driver in the blue and yellow truck number 14, suffers the same fate. In the space of two laps, he drops from second to eighth place. watch from Norbert Kish's perspective. He's in third place behind Antonio Albafetti. Kurzim runs a little wide as the Spaniard in the white 23 truck risks an attack. He makes a small mistake in the in the first corner and I tried in the second one but the tires were not good so I just couldn't make I just couldn't put the power and Kish was close and he goes in the inside and that's it you know but I have to try it. Albafetti falls to third as Norbert Kish overtakes him to move second. These positions are unchanged until the finish line. Andre Kurzin just about holds off his teammate Norbert Kish before the line, followed by Antonio Albafetti in third. Kurzin celebrates the first victory of his ETLC career. At only 25 years old, this is a real triumph for the young German. I don't even know what to say, it's, it's wonderful, we did everything right at the start, I managed to take the lead and increase the gap right at the start, and now we brought home victory. It's fantastic to be double winners. Let's have another look at the results. In fifth place, Adam Lachko collects his first points of the weekend behind Hahn, Albafetti, Kish and Kurzim. The Tank Paul Fierant's Fancic team cheers triumphantly as Andre Kurzim and Norbert Kish have sealed the first double victory in the team's history. First day comes to an end and all around mechanics are working tirelessly to repair the damage, both big and small, suffered by the trucks. <laughs> Not so for the show trucks who work their magic at night on those loyal fans who are camping at the trackside. Day on Sunday, and Adam Latchko in his number 55 Freightliner takes up pole position for race three. The Czech was more than half a second faster than Antonio Albafetti in Super Pole, but Latchko doesn't underestimate his Spanish opponent. It's hard to say uh, before the start. We see after the start, but uh, Antonio have really good start every time, and I hope I have uh, also a good one. On the second row, it's German versus German. Jochen Hahn against Steffi Halm, who finally managed a respectable time in qualifying. Now we'll just see what happens in the race. At any rate, I'm motivated and I want to be near the front by the end of the race. Definitely not in first place, but I'd really like to make it onto one of the steps of the podium. The start is a simple matter for number 55 on the right-hand side. Adam Lachko wins out against Alba Fetti. Spaniard runs wide at the first corner and pays the price at turn two where he's overtaken by Jochen Hahn. We had to cope with a few problems at first but then after the first bend I was lucky in that Antonio came out too wide. Then I took advantage of the opportunity to move up to second. Adam Latchko at the head of the field followed by Jochen Hahn and Antonio Albafetti while Steffi Hall maintains fourth position. From the Dutchman Erwin Klein Nagelbolt's cockpit, we see how Andre Kurzim has to hold off the Portuguese driver Teodosio in number 99. And then the Dutchman overtakes Teodosio himself. Now, from Andre Kurzim's perspective, he can see his contender for the Promoters' Cup, Jose Rodriguez, ride out wide onto the grass. Kurzim in ninth place, Rodriguez behind him tenth. Meanwhile, the positions remain static among the top five. <laughs> Further back, though, Sasha Lentz and David Rosetsky are battling it out for sixth position. <laughs> On 
lap eight, Steffi Halm in fourth behind Albafetti takes an almost perfect line, but she misjudges her speed and skids into the tyre wall at the side of the track. She doesn't lose much ground, remaining ahead of Norbert Kish. Adam Latchko is the first to cross the finish line and wins at Zolder. Second place goes to Jochen Hahn, followed by Antonio Albafetti. On the start, I stay on the first position. And after I go to the front and I look to the mirror and to Jochen, I have a bigger and bigger gap. And I all time thinking for uh, my truck, don't something happened and it stay like knock and I'm very happy. I'm happy just to lose one place and to keep this third position. So yeah, it's good. It's good for us. More points for the championship. So happy. Looking at the table for the third race, Andre Kurzim is in eighth place, meaning he will start on pole position for race four. What a fantastic podium. Three happy drivers with three happy wives. Third round, third race of the weekend. Do you love truck racing? Well, if the great big toys are a little too expensive, then we have the thing for you. The world of logistics in miniature. Remote control model trucks. One of the most visited stalls in the paddock at Zolder. With Andre Kurzim in pole position, we come to the final race. Alongside the Team Tank Pool 24 driver is David Rosetsky. Kurzim is feeling optimistic after yesterday's win. I think we might be able to win again. A few sections of the track are still wet, which should work in our favour as we're fast in the rain too. I mean, we're particularly fast in the wet. I don't think we've got a bad chance at all, but it's going to be difficult. I think the cards are not so bad, but it will be difficult. In fact, every driver in the top eight for the reverse grid race has a chance of winning this race. The start from Andre Kurzim's rear camera. On the left is David Rosetsky, followed by Sasha Lentz and Norbert Kish. Kurzim beats Rosetsky in the sprint as they head for the first corner. The fourth start in Zolda is relatively tidy. In previous years, it has often looked very different indeed. From Antonio Albafetti's cockpit, he sees Hungarian Norbert Kish overtake Sasha Lentz in his Mercedes-Benz to move up to third position. The Spaniard Albafetti also manages to pass Lentz, taking fourth position and forcing Lentz into fifth. But Lentz is then overtaken by Adam Lachko and moments later by Jochen Hahn. On lap four, Albafetti is battling Lachko. The Czech takes a tighter line and manages to overtake the Spaniard, moving up to fourth position. Point of the race, Andre Kurzim is about five seconds ahead of David Rosetsky and Norbert Kish. In his number 33 truck, the Czech just about holds off Kish, and so Lachko is able to catch up. <laughs> Dutchman Irving Klein Nagelvoort skids off the wet track, giving the Portuguese driver Teodosio a chance to pass him at the end of the fifth lap in the battle for positions 11 and 12. The battle has certainly left its mark on the Dutchman. Now we're in Jochen Hahn's cockpit. Last year's European champion is still lagging in sixth position, but suddenly has some technical issues. Steffi Halm in number 44 uses the confusion to her advantage, overtaking first Lentz and then Hahn. Hahn had a screw loose, a fact that was certainly clear after the race. Meanwhile, in front of the crowds of fans, Lachko makes contact with Rosetsky and Kish. The Czech in track 55 is extremely capable in the wet. Just before the end of the race, let's have another look from Irving klein Nagelbort's cockpit. Yet another trip through the gravel. The Dutchman fights like a lion but finishes 12th, his efforts unrewarded. Andre Kurzim is the first to see the chequered flag. His second ETRC victory is the finishing touch to an exceptionally successful weekend. Jochen Hahn finishes eighth, while Lachko, the championship leader, is fourth. Andre Kurzim, the winner.
Amazing. Wunderbar. It doesn't get any better. Overall, we have four Promoters' Cups, two first-place finishes, one sixth, one eighth. It's really good and doesn't get much better. The top three are Kurzim, Rosetsky and Kish. After seven out of nine race weekends, Adam Lachko tops the overall classification with a 53-point gap between himself and German ace Jochen Hahn, who tallied seven points. The Tankpool Fierots Fansig team will not soon forget this weekend at Zolder. No wonder, given their new silverware. Now we're off to Le Mans, where Adam Lachko could seal his triumph in the battle for the title.